وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Today is going to be our third day on the actions of the heart Today I want to speak about a day which has no night It's just a day No night Every single one of us is going to see the day of judgment. It's called day because there's no night for it. Every single one of us is going to see that day come. It's a day that when you look at the Quran, the way Allah spoke about it and the way Allah described it, it's not easy. Allah referred to it subhanahu wa ta'ala as Yawmul Ba'ath, the day of resurrection. Yawmul Nushur, the day when the people are going to be brought back to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Yawmul Khuruj, the day when the people are going to come out of their graves. Yawmul Fasli, the day when everybody's going to be judged between. If two people are holding each other account for an act or for something, that's the day where there's going to be a judgment. Yawmul Hasri wa Nadama. The day of regret and sorrow. Some people are going to be very regretful of what they did in their lives. Allah said in the Quran, What do you know about the day of judgment? This is a rhetorical question. The scholars they say the reason why Allah asked it in that form was to show you how big it is. What do you really know about the day of judgment? Allah repeated it again. What do you really know about the Day of Judgment? And then Allah in one sentence summarized the reality of the Day of Judgment. It's a day where no one can help anyone. Your money that you have today cannot help you. The eloquency, your ability to articulate things cannot help you that day. Your children can't help you. Your mother can't help you. Your parents, no one. Your lawyers, they can't help you. No one can. The affairs is in Allah's hands. It's all dependent on how were you before you came to Allah? How was your attitude? Were you working hard when you were in the dunya or were you not? It's all dependent on that. How have you pleased your Lord? Did you choose what Allah loves over what you love? Did you give preference to his commandments over your own wishes and wills? It all depends on that. Because the affairs is in Allah's hand. It's how much you please him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's how much you follow his commandments. It's how much you work towards getting closer to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The day of judgment, the people are going to be divided into two, not three. Just two groups. فَرِيقٌ فِي الْجَنَّةِ وَفَرِيقٌ فِي السَّعِيرِ A group are going to go to Jannah and they're going to, be in the, they're going to be the inhabitants of Jannah and another group of people are going to be the inhabitants of the hellfire. That's where they're going to live. And that's what made Allah Azza wa Jalla say about the Day of Judgment أَلَا يَظُنُّ أُولَٰئِكَ أَنَّهُمْ مَبْعُوثُونَ لِيَوْمٍ لِيَوْمٍ عَظِيمٍ يَوْمَ يَقُومُ النَّاسُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Allah referred to it as a what? Yawmul Azim. Allah referred to it as Yawmul Azim. He has the, the knowledge and the understanding to say that this is big. And what Allah referred to as big, it definitely is big. Yawmul Azim. It's a big day, brothers. It's a great day. In another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, In haulai yuhibboon al ajilata wa yadaruna wara'ahum yawman thaqila. Yawman thaqila. A heavy day. It's a burden. That day is a very, very heavy day. Who's referring to it as a heavy day? You? Me? No. 
Allah. For us, rocks are heavy. Simple things are heavy. Allah is referring to something that really is heavy that day. In a, another ayah, which scholars they say that this ayah is one of the scariest ayah when it comes to describing the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, Ya ayyuhan nasu taqu rabbakum inna zalzalata sa'ati shay'un azim yawma tarawnaha tadhalu kullu murdi'atin amma arda'at wa tada'u kullu dhati hamlin hamlaha wa tara nasa sukara wa mahum bi sukara walakin adab allahi shadeed Ayat powerful It describes that day for us Allah first starts by saying Ya ayyuhan nasu all people not believers only people all of you should be scared Non-Muslims, Muslims, be scared. Taqwa Rabbakum. Be conscious of your Lord. Have taqwa of, of your Lord. Fear Him privately and publicly. Over what? Ya ayyuhan nasu taqwa Rabbakum. Inna zalzalata sa'ati shay'un azim. That earthquake that will happen before the hour comes is great. It's great. Inna zalzalata sa'ati. Shay'un Azim. Again, Azim. It's big. No one can stop it. Countries can come together. They won't be able to stop it. Nations can come. They can't do nothing. Rather, every nation that day, every individual that day will be kneeled. As Allah said, وَلِلَّهِ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَيَوْمَ تَقُومُ السَّاعَةِ يَوْمَئِذٍ يَخْسَرُ الْمُبْطِلُونَ وَتَرَى كُلُّ أُمَّةٍ جَاثِيَةٍ You'll see every nation Every individual that day on their knees. Weak. No one can talk. The supreme, the ultimate power is with Allah Azza wa Jalla. Lillahi al-Wahid al-Qahar. Where's the kingdom? Where's the strength? Where's the power that everybody believed they had? It's all in Allah's hands, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna zalzalata sa'ati shay'un azim. That earthquake is severe. Allah is saying it's great. And then Allah goes on to say, إن زلزلة الساعة شيء عظيم يوم ترونها تذهل كل مرضعة عما أرضعت the mother that was breastfeeding will forsake her child. Look at a mother today in this world. If she gets caught up in the most serious situation, she doesn't tend to forget her child's breastfeeding. She remembers it. She doesn't need an alarm. She grabs her child and she breastfeeds her child. You all know the famous hadith of a woman who lost her child and then she was looking for her child and she couldn't find her child and whenever she saw a child, a child, she grabbed that child and she placed, placed, placed that child on her breast and she would breastfeed the child thinking it's her own child and then she would look and she would throw the child away realizing it's not hers and she would do that. The messenger then said, if that mother was to find her child, would she throw her child in the hellfire? Would she throw her child in the fire? And then they said, Ya Rasulullah, no, no, she will never. And then the Prophet said, the mother, her mercy to her children is not equivalent to the mercy of Allah to his creation. That mother will forsake her child. And every mother will give birth to her child. That day, the mother will give birth and she will not be struggling like she struggles in the earth where she has to go through her care and she stays in the postnatal unit and she's there and she's been taken care of and whatnot and she goes through surgery. No, none of that. She will give birth in very short time. She wouldn't even realize. She just gave birth. Why? The mind is gone. The whole, the severity of that day and that which is connected to that day and that situation, everything just makes the mother who is pregnant forget her ch child, walk away from her breastfeeding child and walks away from the child she just gave birth to. She walk away. Allah then says, nasa sukara." That day you'll see the people like they are intoxicated, like they took drugs, like they took substance, alcohol. That's how you'll see the people that day. When you look at the people, you see them as though they are drunk. Like they took something. Allah says, No, they are not drunk. What they're doing is not because they are drunk. 
But the punishment of Allah, the hellfire is severe. That's what's making them like this. Who can act normal when they see Jahannam? Allah says, إِذَا رَأَتْهُمْ مِنْ مَكَانٍ بَعِيدٍ سَمِعُوا لَهَا تَغَيُّضًا وَزَفِيرًا When Jahannam sees its people, Jahannam recognizes its people from far. Allah says, إِذَا رَأَتْهُمْ مِنْ مَكَانٍ بَعِيدٍ When Jahannam sees them from a far place, Allah says, سَمِعُوا لَهَا تَغَيُّضًا وَزَفِيرًا They will hear noises, roaring that comes from Jahannam. The Prophet told us in the hadith, لَهَا سَمْعُونَ أَلْفَ زِمَامٍ Jahannam has 70,000 ropes dangling from it. لِكُلِّ زِمَامٍ Each rope, سَبْعُونَ أَلْفَ مَلَكٍ يَجُرُّونَهَا 70,000 angels are pinning it down to hold it. Jahannam is running to its people. Who can act normal after seeing all of this? Jahannam, everybody will be put inside it. The people, the criminals, the wrongdoers, the ones who did riba when they were told to stay away from riba. The ones who oppressed, who were wrongdoers, the ones who were unjust, the sinners, the liars, the cheaters, the backbiters, all of them that day, when they're all placed in Jahannam, it will be Jahannam will be asked, Halim Talati, are you full Jahannam? Jahannam will say, Hal min mazid, oh Allah, do you have more? And Jahannam will still want more. Meaning it won't get full. So who can see that day and that situation, brothers, and not be prepared for it? Who from amongst us has the skin, who's got the flesh, who's got the strength and the power to deal with that? None of us, wallahi. None of us can. Jahannam is too strong for us. It's more powerful than us. Now I want to go into, inshaAllah ta'ala, how should one prepare for that day? What is a sign that you are serious and that you are dedicated to make sure that day you're not going to be the inhabitants of the hellfire, that you're not going to end up in the hellfire and you're not going to be from the dwellers of the hellfire? What can I do? Number one, practical steps, brothers. Number one, we remember this day, Yawmul Qiyamah, always and we never forget it. It's always on our mind. Don't forget it, brothers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the ayah, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu allaha wal tanzur nafsu ma qaddamat lighadin wa attaqu allaha inna allaha khabirun bima ta'amaloon wa la takunu kal ladheena nasu allaha fa ansahum anfusahum ulaika humul fasiqoon Allah says, those of you who believe Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu allaha Those of you who believe come with taqwa What does taqwa mean? Wiqaya Taqwa means shield, a shield Take a shield from the hellfire. Take a shield from the punishment of Allah. Ya yu alladheena amanu attaqu Allah. Wal tanzur nafs. Every one of us, we should look at what we have prepared for tomorrow. It's so shocking that Allah referred to the day of judgment as tomorrow. Not next week. Which is another point that we're going to bring up. Prepare for tomorrow. Question yourself today. Hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu. Account yourself today before you are accounted the day of judgment. Wazinuha qabla an tuzanu. Scale your deeds today before it scales the day of judgment. Umar radiallahu anhu say that Allah. Today you have the chance to question yourself, interrogate yourself. What am I doing? What have I done? Where am I heading? How do I need to rectify my situation today? Before the day where you stand in front of Allah Azza wa Jalla comes. The ayah then goes on to say it. وَاتَّقُوا الله. Again the ayah repeats Have taqwa of Allah Azza wa Jalla إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ Allah has detailed knowledge Khabir is when somebody knows something in great details Allah has great knowledge of what? بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ That which you're doing Alim is you have overall knowledge Khabir He knows what's in the hearts Even before you do it even before it manifests on your limbs, he knows it. And Allah khabir bima ta'amaloon. And then Allah says to us, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهِ Don't be like those who forgot Allah, who forsake the day of judgment. Don't be like those people. What happened to them? فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ 
then they forsake themselves. I want you to ponder here with me. I want you to contemplate with me. This ayah says, those who forgot Allah, they forgot what? They forgot themselves. Anyone who forsakes Allah Azza wa Jalla will always, however much he believes that he's doing himself good, in this dunya he's really forsaken himself. How is he forsaken himself? Because your body, your mind, it requires Allah. It only finds happiness in Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will only find tranquility in Him. You've turned that away from yourself. You forsake yourself. You've brought yourself to Jahannam. Who are you going to blame the day of judgment? When, it, when, you, when Jahannam comes in front of you and it takes you, who are you going to blame? You have no one to blame. You've only got yourself to blame. The second thing, brothers, is that we need to come with if we want to be successful that day is that we believe that the day of judgment is close it's not far yeah wallah it's not far to work for that day first of all don't forget about it the second one is you believe it's close and it's closer to you than your shoelaces I just recited the ayah for you that Allah said, Ya ayyuladheena amanu taqullah wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghadin. Allah referred to the day of judgment as tomorrow. Tomorrow. That's how you should live your life. In another ayah, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He said, Iqtarabati sa'a. Iqtaraba. Ma ma'ana iqtaraba? The day of judgment is close. Iqtarabati sa'a. Wa anshakka al-qamar. In another ayah, Allah said, Iqtaraba lil nasi hisabuhum. Wahum fi ghaflatin mu'ridun. The day of judgment has come close. But the people are heedless. All you're thinking about is your worldly affairs. You've forsaken the day that has no night. The day that will never come to an end. You're either from the path, the people of Jannah, or you're from the people of the hellfire. In another ayah, Allah says, they see it to be something far. When I grow up, 30 years my business is going to become... Who promised you that? If you really are going to prepare for the Day of Judgment, you have to believe it's close. You have to live your life like this could be the last moment you live. It was mentioned in some of the books. Ibn Jawzi mentioned in Kitab Bahrul Dumu'. This book is heart softening book. In that book, he mentioned that a man was requested for him to lead the prayer. A group of people they said to him, "Lead, lead, lead, lead." He said, "I don't want to lead." They pushed him forward. He said, "No, no, somebody else lead." And then they said to him, "Please lead." And then he said, "Okay, I'm going to lead today, but I'm not going to lead tomorrow. Don't ask me for, to lead another day." Then they said to him, "Go back. Don't lead us. Do you believe you're going to live for that long?" We pray our prayer, this one, like it's our last. We never pray. Ah. You with me, brothers? We pray our prayers as though this is the last and there's not going to be anything after this. If you want to prepare for the day of judgment, that's what you need to do, brothers. The Messenger وسلم, he said, ana wa The Messenger said, Me and the hour. We were brought out like this. He put his two fingers like that. Brothers, look how the space between the two. That's it. Me and the hour are like that. Like that. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in a hadith, كيف أنعم? How am I going to enjoy myself? وصاحب الصور And the one that was given the trumpet, he placed the trumpet on his mouth and he brought his ear close to Allah. All he's waiting for is blow. His mouth is already on it. All he's waiting for what? Blow. And he's going to blow in it. That's how close it is, brothers. The day of judgment is very, very close. And if you look at the early people, that's how they live their life. Nabi Lai Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he saw a group of companions building a hut. And he said, why are you building it? They said, Ya Rasulullah, it became corrupt. It got destroyed. We're rebuilding it again. The messenger sallallahu alayhi wa he said, Ma ara al-amra. I don't see the day of judgment illa a'jala min dharik. I don't see the day of judgment except to me it's closer than before you finishing the refurbishment of this building. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He saw the day of judgment to be close. And when you live your life like that, you will work hard. You're always on your toe. Always just perfecting your action. 
staying away from that which you need to stay away from. You don't waste your time. You don't waste your time. People who waste their time and talk about unnecessary things that don't benefit you. Is this going to take you closer to Jannah? No. Is it going to distance you from the hellfire? No. Then why are you talking about it? Why are you indulging in it? The person starts thinking wisely. The third thing, brothers, is the third thing is that we take a provision for it. We take a what? A provision. We stack. Brothers, this is a journey. It's a journey. All of us are going to embark on that journey. That journey needs the right equipment. If you're going to go and travel today and you told your wife, honey, pack, my, pack me some stuff. I'm going. I'm going to travel. She packs your stuff for you. And when you get to your place, you find out she put in there rocks and sticks. What are you going to do? You'll be shocked. I'm in the middle of the desert. I need food. I need this. I need that. I need my first aid. What's going to rocks and sticks do for me? Sahih. We need to prepare for the day of judgment. We don't want to come and oh, we've got the wrong, the wrong stuff. We've come and we lost it. That's why the ayah that I mentioned before, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, taqullah, taqwa, is the zad. That's what Allah said in another ayah. وَتَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ taqwa. Take your provision. The best provision is what? It's taqwa. The best provision is what? It's taqwa. That's what you take with your brothers. Anyone who does that, brothers, is going to come the day of judgment and is going to be happy. Last but not least, the last point is to fear the day of judgment. We need to be scared of it. Whenever we hear about it, whenever we read it in the Quran, it should make us be scared and worried and fearful. Allah says, وَأَنذِرْهُمْ يَوْمَ الْآزِفَةِ إِذِ الْقُلُوبُ لَدَى الْحَنَادِرِ كَاظِمِينَ مَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ Allah Tabarak Ta'ala, He told us, مَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ حَمِيمٍ وَلَا شَفِيرٍ يُطَاعٍ Allah told us in the ayah, وَأَنذِرْهُمْ وُونَ مُحَمَّدٍ The day when there's nothing like it but this. A fearful day. What did Allah say about the believers? Allah said about the believers, رِجَالٌ لَا تُلْهِهِمْ تِجَارَةٌ وَلَا بَيْعٌ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَإِقَامِ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِيْتَاءِ الزَّكَاةِ يَخَافُونَ يَوْمًا يَخَافُونَ يَوْمًا تَتَقَلَّبُ فِيهِ الْقُلُوبُ وَالْأَبْصَارِ Allah said about the believers, رِجَالٌ they are men. لَا تُلْهِهِمْ تِجَارَةٌ Trading and business does not take their mind. It doesn't make them forget the reality that's waiting for them. No. لَا تُلْهِهِمْ تِجَارَةٌ They're trading and their business. They see it as a stepping stone to get closer to Allah. They see their work to give it as charity, as to go to the masjid and pray, to get risk food from this so they can pray Qiyamul Layl, so they can etc. That's how they look at their money and everything. It doesn't turn them away from the remembrance of Allah. What did Allah say then after that? They establish a prayer, they give zakat. They fear the what? They fear the day of judgment. What do they fear? Fear the day of judgment. In another ayah, Allah Azza wa Jalla, what did He say? Allah said something very powerful. Allah Azza wa Jalla, He said, إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا إِنَّا نَخَافُ مِنْ رَبِّنَا يَوْمًا عَبُوسًا قَمْطَرِيرًا فَوَقَاهُمُ اللَّهُ شَرَّ ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمِ وَلَقَاهُمْ نَظْرَةً وَسُرُورًا they give the food, they give the provision. When they give it, they say, إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ We're doing this all for whose sake? We're doing all of this for the sake of Allah. إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ We're doing all of this for whose sake? Allah Azza wa Jalla's sake. لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً We don't want reward for you guys for what we're giving you. We don't want you to repay us back. We are scared of the Day of Judgment. So brothers and sisters, we need to work hard for the Day of Judgment. We need to exert effort. We need to prepare for it. It's coming our way. Whether we like it or not, whether we agree with it or not, it's going to come. It's the inevitable reality. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is for me and Shaytan and Allah and His Messenger are free from it.
Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa tubuli.